Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gillen's Garage. As you can see behind me here, I have the uh, Montana Mule, our original uh, five-speed hunting van build that we've used several times to go out west. And uh, I had some requests to uh, go over the uh, manual transmission swap. So I'm going to use the Montana Mule and the current van I'm working on because I can show you the completed with this one and the in progress with the other van. So I'm hoping it should be a helpful aid to uh, show you what you need and helpful tricks on how to get the clutch pedal assembly in and the swap done. So if you like what you see, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know that I'm doing a good job. Throw me a comment. I'll try to get back to you. Thanks a lot. All right, guys, I apologize for the lighting. Uh, fall has a, ha, is upon us, and so uh, it gets dark pretty early. And if I'm going to make videos, i got to uh, make them when I'm awake. So here's a shot of the, uh, the 87 that we've swapped a uh, ZF5 into. And so I'm going to go over the... Uh, uh, the clutch pedal assembly and how everything is fashioned uh, as we have this one. So hopefully the lighting is okay. So here we have the assembly. Now it's basically all the same as the other one. Now when you do this, you gotta uh, tear uh, the, uh, um, trim panel off of the steering column and it is really helpful to drop the column to give you a little bit more clearance to kind of, you're taking this uh, pedal assembly and kind of rotating it up over top of that and lock it in into place. Plus, I'll show you in the other van, it bolts in to here and also um, it uses the same bolts as the, um, as the, uh, um, brake booster. So you can see a bolt here and a bolt right there. So it actually uses the same bolts for that. So you unbolt the uh, brake booster and slip that out and get it in. Now, uh, pretty important things here. As you can see right here, if your uh, van has cruise control, this is your um, uh, vacuum switch that shuts off the uh the cruise control now i have wanted to tee into this line i have an extra switch and build a bracket that puts another uh breaker switch for the clutch say if you're going down the interstate and you wanted to uh shift gears but you had cruise control on i always tap the brakes first and then shift gears I don't know what would happen, but I can imagine it would be bad if the fuel, there, the accelerator is keeping fuel and I engage the clutch. And I'm assuming bad things would happen. So as you can see right here, if you're lucky enough to get a van that uh, is stick shift, it should have this, uh, this neutral safety switch or clutch engagement switch for starting and because we had multiple drivers on this when we were going out west wanted to make sure that was operational so that you know we didn't send the van out through the back of the garage or into the garage or <laughs> any any bad situation you can think of so as you can see here here's the original wiring and we did splice into this now if you're working on any of these vans i recommend finding uh, i can show you here uh, a little bit later, but the vacuum and electrical diagram, you can find them. I found uh, the, the wiring manuals I got on eBay. But if you trace the wires out, and this is like a purple and red and uh, solid red. I'm looking here. With a blue tracer. So, and that might be red with black. I'm not exactly sure, but I remembered looking it up. This was what went down to the uh, neutral safety switch on the automatic transmission. Now we trace that back to the loom, back into the cab, and was able to cut it off 
and splice it into this. And I'm telling you, it works. Now, as you can see there, uh, as you slide that in, what it does is this plastic uh, piece right here, and this will actually slide up and down on that. When you push the clutch in, that engages the switch. So once it's down in that position, it'll fire up. If it's here and this isn't engaged down, you can kind of, now you don't really, oh, there. You can kind of hear that click, maybe. Once that clicks and engages, then the truck will start. Thought that was pretty important. The van that I have, that I got the clutch pedals out, did not have the neutral safety switch. So I need to find another one of these. I might, I gotta check and see if I can source this off of like an F-series truck or something along those lines or something else to get this because I feel it's an important piece just for the overall safety. So that pretty much covers that. I'll show you what we got uh, in, the, uh, in the other van as far as getting that uh, clutch pedal because I, I have it a lot more exposed in the other one. All right, so here's a little better look uh, with everything torn apart. Obviously, because I had the body off of this thing, and uh, I thought, why not? I got the steering column out of the way, but this kind of gives you a better look. Uh, you can kind of see, well, you should be able to see the four bolts here. First, get the lighting a little better. Um, you can see the four bolt holes, and those match up with the, mas the brake master cylinder. Um, and uh, so it bolts through there, and then... As I come up behind the gauge cluster, you can see these two bolt holes right here. Now, those two bolt holes uh, bolted in on the top. So, uh, and then there are two more right there, further back. So there's two here toward the uh, I'd call it the steering wheel portion of the column. They're in the middle, and then those four on the front. You're gonna to need to get all of those out, and if you're gonna switch this over, you're definitely gonna to need to pull the gauge cluster and whatnot. Now these two holes here, this one and that one, hold the steering column in place. So you're definitely gonna to need to take the steering column loose. Uh, I recommend, um, loosening these three bolts in an effort to let the steering column drop down a little bit more to give you uh, the added clearance to, to get this rotated into place, unless you take the whole column out, which is what I've done here. But you shouldn't have to do that. I didn't do that on the first one, and I wouldn't have done it unless I had to here. So, uh, as you can see, I'm missing the piece for the uh, the uh, neutral safety switch or the uh, clutch engagement uh, safety switch. Um, like I say, going to try to find that. But otherwise, that's kind of the breakdown on um, what you need to what you need to do to actually get it in. Well, let me tell you, I'd have half-assed it if I didn't talk about the uh, clutch master cylinder and. Uh, clutch reservoir so <laughs> here it is this is the factory setup off of the 1988 econoline 150 that we got the clutch pedal assembly out of right there if you look um, right beside the gas pedal is the clutch rod for the uh, for the master cylinder and it connects and I'll have to show you on the other one it connects up to this clutch and obviously as you operate this Ooh, nice bushings, huh? As you operate that clutch, that arm goes down. And it's kind of a strange master cylinder. It's a vertical, semi-vertical master cylinder. And that pushes down through, and the bulk of the master cylinder is underneath the floor with a, a hose connection that has the reservoir that mounts to the front of the brake booster. Uh, so I will show you that here in a moment but you can see I have a piece of reinforced 
Uh, it's a heavier gauge. I can't exactly tell you, but um, looks like about an inch and a mm, inch and a eighth or inch and a quarter hole drilled through the floor. And it, it's really helpful if you have a parts van that you can take some measurements off of um, to to get that. I obviously, you know, tap tap screwed that to the floor, then drilled all the holes where everything needed to be placed. Um, but the reason I put that reinforcement in is because uh, reading and actually looking at the other one, uh, the other one had um, uh, some tears in the sheet metal. So obviously I recognized that there was an issue with the strength. And obviously when you're operating this, um, there's a fair amount of torque going down on that little piece of sheet metal. So I thought, well, let's reinforce that. Now, on the new setup, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to go with this same vertical um, clutch because you can get it and you can order it off eBay, uh, but I believe this arm, which is not the end of the world because you can modify and, and make whatever you need and extend. And actually, if there was a coupler in here, you could get a little bit better adjustment in in the stroke of the clutch rod itself but um i might go with a horizontal one that goes through the firewall on the other van and i'll, I'll talk about that one I'll, I'll shift over to there all right well if you know econoline vans you know they're a little busy under the hood but this one's a little extra busy uh, with the propane injection but back to the uh, discussion at hand here as i zoom in here as you look underneath that little vacuum booster, you can see that white or semi-clear um, reservoir. I'll try to point to it here if I can get my hand down in there, but there's the cap. That is the master or clutch master cylinder reservoir. And you can kind of see that bracket coming off of it behind that vacuum hose there, but you kind of see that, that, uh, that bracket going. And actually, you can, if you're looking real hard, you can see the bolt. That's the uh, bolt that holds the uh, clutch, or I'm sorry, the brake master cylinder in place. And there's a double nut. There's a nut that holds the uh, brake master cylinder on. And then there's another nut that holds this bracket on that holds this. Uh, try to look over here on the other side and give you a little bit better shot. There you go. So you can kind of see... Like I say, that bolt that holds holds the uh, master cylinder on. And you see the sheet metal of that bracket. And then you see the bolt that holds the bracket on. So hopefully you can find that whole assembly. If not, uh, you can manufacture one. Uh, you know, it, a, a, anything is possible. Fortunately, I had that piece off the 88 van that we uh, got this whole setup from. All right, so here I am back in the van I'm building, and you can see where the uh, factory brake booster and master cylinder bolts in. And this would be the area in which if you had an F-series truck that the uh, clutch master cylinder would bolt to. The only problem is you can see here, there's this uh, rolled bead for stiffening uh, in this area. So if I was gonna bolt the clutch master cylinder here, I would have to probably cut a section of this out to get flat metal and, and weld a piece of metal back in there, and then probably have to reinforce it a little bit to support the master cylinder and bolt it here. Now, I am thinking about using a Hydro Boost setup, which would give me a lot more space to mount a master cylinder here because I don't have that giant vacuum booster heat uh, in this location, which would make this plausible. Right now, uh, I'm not really certain which direction I'm gonna go. I really like the idea of the Hydro Boost. I also like the idea of the F-Series because uh, it's much easier to go to the parts store and find a clutch master cylinder for any of the OBS, uh, F-Series pickup truck master cylinder than it is for me to find an Econoline van master cylinder. That 
that's kind of a tall order. So as far as making ease of replacement parts, this might be the way I go. All right, so here I am back into Montana Mule with our first attempt at the five-speed swap. And as you can see, here's the original uh, uh, engine cover out of the 88 Econoline van that we got all the swap parts out of. Um, you can see that uh, the original boot is a little perished. Now, maybe our driveline angle is not 100%. It could be leaning back a little bit. But the uh, shifter itself, where it, it penetrates, is a little bit further back in the opening. And so that's put a little bit of stress on that boot. Now, we're using the van boot with the truck boot. And really not a great setup itself. But um, <laughs> this may sound a little redneck, but eh, that's why we keep this nice little pillow here. Uh, we really tuck this pillow right in there, and it kind of helps seal up some of the engine noise, uh, which is also kind of one of the reasons why on the new van project, I, uh, <laughs> I'm i using the NV4500 that I can um, actually get a, uh, uh, a penetration through the four and get an easier setup to seal it up. But... If you get things squared away and, and get a better boot, and as you can see here, we use the original uh, truck shifter. Get that boot out of the way. And uh, it was originally um, like shifting in the back seat with the way that was. Uh, it, it was kind of fun, but um, ended up cutting it, uh, splicing it a little bit. And actually, if I pull this up, you can see that I had to extend it by about three inches to get that uh, shifter up where we really needed it to be, where it was comfortable. So just kind of cut it, rotated the top about 180 degrees or a little more there, as you can see by the rod. Um, and uh, basically tacked it where it felt good, tested it through all the gears, and welded it in place. And you can see we can unbolt this with the factory uh, there's another bolt down there, but you can unbolt it and remove the shifter, take the dog box off, do whatever work you need to do, and uh, or drop the transmission out or whatnot. But uh, this is the setup inside uh, the current van that is done. All right, so here you can see the Cummins uh, mounted into place, but we're going to focus here on the transmission now. As you notice, it's up through the hole I made, but not perfectly centered. I've had the body on and off a couple of times, and it shifted a little bit toward the driver's side, so I'm going to have to make an adjustment later. But for the purposes of this video, it's pretty much where it needs to be. But um, obviously, this is an NV4500, and it's a later generation one. Uh, I can't remember. The truck was like a 99 or a 2000, if memory serves. It was a 24 valve truck. It actually has the upgraded input shaft out of the 5600 transmission. So it's fairly uh, decently built transmission. But back to the discussion here. Uh, as you can see, this uh, versus the other van, which I'll show you. The other van has this shifter coming up through the dog box in this area here, um, which you'll see I don't I don't really like. Um, but uh, I went with the NV4500 because it gets me outside the dog box. It gets me a flat floor that I can uh, bolt the uh, shifter boot to and get the shifter mounted to and get a tidier setup so that's why i went with the nv4500 versus a zf5 or a zf6 plus it pretty much lined me up and if you notice here you can see a couple of uh, spot welds across here the uh, floor support cross member runs across here if you actually if i zoom in which now that yeah, you probably really can't see. You'll just have to take my word for it. But I actually did have to cut a little bit of that pinch weld um, 
to get it in place and I will probably have a little bit of interference with a uh, uh, of the cross member so I'm gonna have to modify that a little bit on the bottom side but it's really not all that bad uh, just cut a piece and 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 kind of flip it uh, rotate it such that it gives me a little bit of clearance for where this rolls down to the body the cast body of the top of that uh, shifter cover uh, or the fork cover, whatever you want to call it. But I just need a little bit more clearance right up here on the front. But otherwise, the thing fits like a glove. All right. Well, that was a lot of uh, information to digest. I uh, hope some of you stuck around for the end here. But uh, if you got any questions, because maybe I missed something or there's something that you, uh, you'd like to know a little bit more about, hey, feel free, reach out. Uh, shoot me a comment, you know, search me up on Facebook. We can private message, I can get a phone number, we can have a, have a talk. Uh, I like talking to people and I like helping people. That's kind of why I set this up. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to some more videos. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.